Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. Today's topic is all around abundance and money, which has been something I've covered a few times in the last three months. But uh, once, whenever we do uh, mail outs to you guys and ask, what would you really like more of? It's, it's always, uh, I'd like to hear more about money, which is, uh, which is good, which is a good thing. And so we will talk about that and go, go into money and, uh, and have a session today. So I think it's going to be a, a really great session. Now, let me just ask, how many of you would love to be able to, to create more abundance or, or more money? Like that's something you would, uh, you would, you would like that. Uh, get, get, let me know if that's something that you're interested in having more abundance, more freedom, more money, those sort of things. For me, this was something that was a very high priority throughout my life. I grew up in a, in a working class environment. Did anyone else grow up in a working class environment? Meaning everyone around you worked for money. I did. I saw my family work for money. My, uh, my friends, fathers and, and mothers worked for money. My teachers worked for money. So it was always in that structure. And and what, what you see is, is if, you, if you grew up around working class where you have to sacrifice to get money, money actually means a lot more than just the numbers because what it really means is you had to do something to get it. So actually, it, it's really tied to your time, okay? It, it's really tied to your time, meaning you had to put your time in. Now, we all know that our time is our life. So it's quite logic, logical that uh, if you have to use time to get money and time is your life and you know your life has you know, got an ending at some point, it's, it's finite, uh, so, so you know that, then it's logical that you go, okay, I've had to use something of this very valuable thing in my life to get it. And a lot of times you would do something that you wouldn't necessarily just do for free. So, so it gets this idea that it's scarce because you only got so many hours in the day, so many hours in the working week, and you're going to get so much. And so the only goal that I saw growing up was try to get really, really, really well educated so you can charge a lot for your time, you know? And, uh, and that, that's, that's all that, that I saw. And, uh, and that seemed to be, you know, what was the best way. So money was scarce because time was scarce. So that's what I repeated. I went and decided to try to get as educated as I could to be able to get as, as much of it as, as I could because what I saw when I was growing up is that there were things that I would like to do, things that I would like to have, but I wasn't able to do all of them. And it was because always, you know, the reason was, well, we can't afford that. And, you know, I had a great upbringing, hey, uh, really, really, really blessed. And it was always, you know, we, there was things that we couldn't do. And for me, it was, it was a really interesting time in my life. When I was about nine or 10 years old, I had a, a best friend of mine and, and his father went and purchased a business and they started making a lot more money. And then he went to a different school and then a different high school. And, and, uh, and I got to still play sports on the weekends and things. And I'd watch that they would always have the, the more expensive gear. I'd see that they bought, you know, uh, a, a better car and these things. And I saw our, our world and their world change. And it became very obvious to me right at the beginning that it was because of a business. So I made a decision very early that that was, a, that it was an important thing to me. And, and I would feel jealous of, of, of people who had things that I couldn't. And so then on the other side, if you feel, uh, if I felt jealous of someone who had things that I couldn't, when I had things that other people couldn't, I felt guilty because I would have empathy for being the person who couldn't have it. Does that make sense? So I'd go, I wish I could have that. So then if I ever had something that someone else couldn't, I would picture myself being them. So I had this really strange uh, relationship with it. And I think many of us do. It was very confusing for me about money. You know, I would get told if I saw someone who was homeless, that person must be lazy. But then at the same time, I would hear how uh, everyone wanted to make a lot of money so they could retire and basically be lazy, you see? And then if I, so it's weird. So they're lazy, they're bad, but I want to make money to retire to be lazy. And then this person over here has lots of money. So they must have had to do something uh, to that ripped off other people to have it. But then uh, 
uh, everyone I knew would spend all day trying to get this thing that if you had lots of it, you were a bad person that ripped people off. And I think the most profound moment I ever had that really uh, upset the way that my money system was, is I remember in the late 80s and early 90s when, um, you know, rugby, which is the best, the biggest, the best, <laughs> that's funny, the Freudian slip, the biggest sport uh, in uh, New Zealand. And, uh, and what happened was rugby was uh, transitioning from amateur uh, to, um, to professional. And, and my father was, was mad at some of these players because he would say, you know, isn't it enough that they get to play for the All Blacks? Now they need to get paid on top of that. And so he had this really, you know, and I remember him being really annoyed at these, you know, selfish uh, uh, sportsmen. And, and so then it was really strange. So then I wanted to be a sportsman as well, but she didn't ever want to do it for money. So, so I was very keen. You see how that's quite confusing, right? Give, let me know. Is that quite confusing a homeless person is lazy so they're bad a rich person has lots they're bad but then we give up our time it's very very confusing and and many of us live in this confused idea of what it is and, and so because uh, you know i if i ever had a lot of it and, and it was tied to money i'd feel really good about um sharing money and i even uh, i really had to coach myself out of this word has anyone ever said the the word you know um i want to spoil you I want to spoil you about your spoiled uh, or, or um, you know, filthy rich. There's some very interesting things about that. It's like, you know, I'm going to spoil you. And, that, and that's such a weird way to talk about talk about this this money thing. So so for me, uh, you, you know, I, I had a big challenge with it. And, and over time, I had to come to some big realizations. And I want to share some of these realizations with you because uh, after these realizations that, that, that we'll go through, on, on the other side of it, uh, you know, I have a $20 million business. I have another business doing about $6 million. Uh, Harriet and I have uh, enough wealth in our investments that if we stopped working, I think our mortgage is paid for just over 30 years. So, so we, you know, we, everything's sorted, house paid off, like it's, it, it's completely different. And I had to go through a, a transition about how I related to, to money. And that transition was first realizing that if I had more of it, it didn't mean that others had less. So the first thing I want to introduce is that money is like air. Money is like air. You can breathe in as much of it as you like, and another person can breathe in as much of it as, as they like. It's completely abundant. Money actually won't change you. Uh, and this is an idea, and I'll talk about this with the identity. Many of our identities think that uh, if we have money, it will be very different. Uh, money has a structure. To create it as a structure, to grow it as a structure. And, and so what you want, and most, uh, most of you should want this, I'd say, is you want to have money like an overflowing cup. Who would like to have their financial situation like an overflowing cup? You're completely filled up with everything you need and there's overflow and that overflow you can give and you can share. One of the things we must do is if we don't have an overflowing cup, it's not really our place to be giving it away yet. So our goal is to create the overflowing cup. We can give away the overflow because we, we've got this, this source that's flowing over. So I want you to think about that imagery of a, of a cup or a glass, you know, so like this glass of water. If I keep on giving what's in here, I end up with nothing. But if I create something that overflows, I can keep on giving it away uh, as, as much as I want. So let's talk a little bit about what money is, hey, what money is. So uh, many of you will know uh, my take on this. So, so money, uh, isn't necessarily energy. It isn't uh, many things that we think it is. Money is a measurement. And, uh, and that is, it's like a centimeter. It's like a mile. It's a measurement. And it's a measurement of value that has been made up by humans. And, and it's not like we just started doing this. Okay. Uh, money is a measurement. We've, we've used uh, seashells uh, as money. We've used glass beads. Money's in many different cultures. Money is a measurement. And it's very obvious if, if someone's got a farm with, with chickens and someone else is, uh, you know, uh, is a builder and, and the, the, the farm with the chickens wants a house built, 
it's very difficult to try to know well how many eggs or chickens would, would you give to the builder to build you a house so instead of that what we did is we created a system um, that measures it so then you know chickens can be sold and, and eggs can be sold to get some of it and we can trade so it's a very good system uh, it's a very good system. Now, obviously, many of you, it's very hard to escape right now this idea of how uh, crooked the money system is and uh, the fiat currency and, and everything that happened with the Reserve Bank back in, you know, uh, you know Jekyll Island in the 1900s and, and, and everything that I'm sure you guys have researched and you're aware about uh, money printing and, and everything else that uh, the, the Federal Reserve does. So here's what I know is humans are always going to have a way to measure value. And uh, whether that's going to be, uh, you know, gold or silver or pieces of paper, banknotes or Bitcoin or Ethereum or glass beads, but we, we're going to have a way. Does everyone agree with that? We're, we're going to have a way to, to measure value and trade. And so your goal isn't to worry necessarily uh, about which one of those systems it will be. It's for you to understand how to, to receive in whatever um, form that trade is taking place of the day. So, so let's get back to this. So, so money is a unit of exchange, okay? It's a unit of exchange. It's a unit of choice. So it's a unit. Just like a, a kilogram uh, is, a, is a unit of weight, okay? This is a unit of choice, a unit of exchange, okay? And it's a very important thing to realize. It's a unit. And, uh, and that's, that's very exciting to understand. That's, that's what it is. And it measures something. What it measures is it measures the value of something. Now, value of something is completely personal. Many of the women on this call might value things that I, I would have no interest of. Many of the men on this call will value all sorts of things I have no interest in. Value is relative to every single person. True? So we have to ask ourselves, what is value? What is value? Because if money is measuring something, we must, we must understand what value is. Okay. So value is simple. Please could someone write this in. Value is either an increase in satisfaction or a decrease in pain. We value something that will increase our satisfaction or decrease uh, a pain or a problem in our life. And so how much a person values something, for example, many of the people that, that I know really value having a nice car, really value that. Others of you, my God, never value that. I couldn't care less. So the, the value is how much satisfaction that's going to give you. If... Uh, it, if you've got a, a big problem, you'll value the solution a lot more if someone doesn't have that problem, okay? Does that make sense, everyone? So, so that's what value is, yeah? So that's what value is. And I want you to understand this because many people get confused about how to create more money, but you must understand value, okay? So I want you to really hear this. Uh, money will flow to those who add value to others in a way that others want to pay for it. Does that make sense? Money will flow and whatever the money is, whether it's Bitcoin or seashells or gold or, or currency or whatever it is, money will flow to those who add value, but this is very important, in a way that others want to pay for it. Mm, think about that. So, so you can still go and give value, but if you don't do it in a way that others want to pay for it, then you won't receive it. Does that make sense? It's very important because you've got to under this, understand the structure of money. You know, I see many uh, courses out there that say, close your eyes and think you're abundant and then wonder why gold hasn't piled up underneath you. It's because it, it, money's measuring something. And unless you have, have something that creates that measurement, it's not going to turn up. True. And, and there's many people out there, but Chris, what about those who win, win the lottery? Yeah, well, you know, there's many flukes in life. You know, there's many flukes in life. And, and uh, money creation is, is done, done in this. Okay. So 
money will flow to those who add value in a way that others want to pay for it. So if you can find a way to create value, and value is typically done by a service, okay? Uh, a service is very, very, very uh, key to pretty much everything. Uh, you know, this computer is providing a service to me. So there's a service that you provide. You be of service in a way that people want to pay it. If you can find a way to create value and then do it with, uh, with a small amount of time, you'll have a great structure for, for creating money. Does that make sense, everyone? If you, if you have a way to add value to other people and then you're able to do it with, with a little amount of your time, you're going to have a great structure to create money. And, you know, this is why, uh, you know, Facebook makes a lot of money and Apple makes a lot of money is they have a way to add value to billions of people. You see, and that, that's a very important thing. When we help our Magnetic Mind coaches build their business, one of the things we say is work with a group because then you can help more people do the same thing. So it's a very, very important structure. So does everyone here starting to understand the structure of money creating? Money creating. There's a few, you, you must be able to add a service in a way that others want to pay for it. And then if you can find ways to do that with a small amount of time, but still keep the service high, uh, you're going to have a great structure to, to create money. So the, the thing is, is that once you create money, there's actually only three things you can do with it. There's actually, you know, we think there's so many things to do with it, but it, it's actually, you know, uh, take it from me, went from not having a lot of money to, to millions of dollars coming in every single month. There's only a few things you can do with it. The, the first thing is that you can use it in ways you value. So you can, you can spend it in ways that you value. Now that can be tithing at your church. It can be giving to charity. It can be buying cars. It can be buying houses. It could be having staff or people to help you. Do you see that? So the first one is it can be used in ways you value. Pretty simple. The second thing you can do is you can lend it and earn interest. So the first thing you can use it, spend it in ways you value. The second thing you can do is you can lend it and earn interest. And the third thing you can do is buy stuff and rent it out. And those are really good. That's really the three things you can do with it. Like those are it. And the reason why I tell you that is it's not like there's this endless, endless things. I find most people think that their, their life is going to be drastically different if they had millions and millions of dollars. And uh, take it from me, it's basically the same. It's basically the same. You, you might live in a bigger house. You might have a car that can go a bit faster. You might have less stress in certain areas. But, but other than that, you know, then it's, it's basically the same. So does that make sense? Is, is you don't change. You don't change. Uh, if you get it right, if you get in the right structure, uh, you won't change when you get it. You, you'll, you'll realize that you can already have it. And once you, the, the key is actually, and we're going to cover this today, the key is actually realizing that, that money doesn't have any power to give you anything that you can't give yourself. And when you really realize that, you realize, yeah, yeah, I, I'm the one that actually gets, gives it to myself. And you get to, to take that power back. So the question is, okay, if there is an infinite amount of uh, desires that people have, if there is an infinite amount of desires and problems that you could have a service to solve, literally infinite, and, and there's so many, there's so many ways to, to create a, a system that, that produces money. Why don't we have it all? And I mean, really, there's so many that I've got a, a, a hero of mine who created a uh, uh, Jim's mowing here in Australia. And, and all he did was create a uh, lawn mowing business and uh, then turned it into a franchise. He's worth $500 million. And, and, you know, there's so many, there's so many examples, you know, Sarah Blakely, who created Spanx, sold it for a billion dollars, which just cutting off the bottoms of her leggings, you know, it, uh, her tights rather to create leggings. It's, it's so amazing to me that there is, there is for every single desire or problem, there is a business opportunity out there. there there's just, there's so many possibilities. So with all these possibilities and all this available uh, resource and people, are, and then adding credit and everything else, there's so much. 
you have to ask yourself, well, why, why doesn't everyone have it? Who agrees? That's a, that's a good question. Well, well, if there's so much, then why, why isn't why has everyone got it? And, and the answer is, is that we have so much resistance to it. If we grew up without the correct understanding of what money is and what it will do for us, and that's our upbringing, our identity will reject it. As we know, we have, uh, let me move this up a bit. As we know, we have uh, an identity here in our, our current reality. And maybe this has a little bit of money and we want to have a lot of money. And that's our desired reality. We want to move there. But the identity doesn't equal. So our identity, uh, you know, rejects it. It does, doesn't that make sense? Our identity, who we are, says that's not who I am. That's not who my family is. And I don't know what it would be like to have that. See, we think that this will be different. And so because of that, it's not the same. So we actually never allow ourselves to go and have it because we make up all these stories about it. So let's unpack some of these stories that might be in there. See, you actually must become someone that is abundant and free and have everything that money would give you. You must actually become it now. And that's a challenge because we have all these ideas in our head that if we had more, then we would be different. You see, but it's not true is, is we all know that's not true. And uh, we all think that there's, there's something out there that would be different if we had it, but, but actually uh, you can still be the happiest person right now. And then you can be happy with the money uh, or not. And so it's kind of weird because our brain goes, well, if I can already have it all now, then why would I want to go for it then? And, and the answer is, is because <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> the answer is it's fun to create something. And I really want to share this with you. The biggest joy in my life has been to create something that others value massively and it changes their life and they are happy to purchase it and they feel so good about purchasing it and I can deliver it to them and then I have an overflowing cup and then with that overflow, I get to do all sorts of fun stuff. And, and I get to share it with people and I get to employ amazing people and I get to do all of that. And that's just fun. And that's why it's so exciting to me to share this topic. So most of us, including me, have had a lot of resistance to it. So the first one that I see is many of us uh, have a resistance around deserving, deserving freedom or deserving money. See, the truth is, is we don't actually have a resistance to the money. We have a resistance about who we will be. See, we don't actually have a resistance to the money. We have a resistance to how it will be and who will be. Just get, can I check in in the chat box? Let me know. Is it true? So I don't know how I would be. What if I, what would I do if I didn't have to go to a job? Uh, what would people think of me? If I had to turn up to a family gathering and someone says, hey, how's your year been? And you say, it's been fantastic. I'm making $10 million, bought this amazing car, I'm traveling the world, I'm feeding all these orphans, all these things. You go, what, what would they think of me? What would I do? Would I be attacked? There's so many things, so many things. So, so many of us, the first one is uh, self-worth and deserving. You see, we think, well, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. I don't have worth. I don't deserve it. We try to justify it, you see, and it's very hard to justify uh, because there's no reason why anyone should have it. Think about that for a second. There's no one. No one deserves it. There's no way to deserve it or not deserve it. It's not about you because it's a structure. Do you see that how we try to make it about ourselves? I need to deserve it. And the idea is, well, I must do something really, really good. Well, I'm sorry to let you know that doing good and creating money don't necessarily match. I know. I know. You can go do good over here and have no money. And you can do good and have lots of money. Doing good, it, it, it doesn't match. You can do good or not. It, it's just 
you can be a good person without money or with money. You can also be a person that doesn't have others' best interests in heart and have money or not have money. It's like deserving doesn't actually fit in the money equation. Does that make sense? Because money doesn't care. I want you to really get that. You can't deserve it. Money doesn't care. Money's a structure that if you have something that people want to pay for and you can deliver it in a way they want to pay for it, you will get it. You will get it. Does that make sense? Can everyone really get that? It's not about being good or there's not like, if you do things this way, you pray a certain way. It's going to, no, not really. They might do that though, but that's not the reason why they have it. That's not the reason why they have it. True? Because money's a structure. The next thing is that uh, we have money, uh, money traumas, okay? Generational uh, money traumas where... Uh, Maybe we got ripped off. Maybe um, someone who had a lot of money, but there's a lot of pain associated with it. And uh, a lot of times we're actually not aware because money, I want everyone to hear this, is where money uh, sits in the brain. This is so weird. It is so weird. Where our relationship with money sits in the brain, when they have people talk about it, it fires up pretty much the same as when someone thinks about a family member. And you got to wonder, well, why would it fire up? It's not the same for a car or something else. When they think about money and financial abundance, it's coded in the brain as something like so important because, and this is weird to say, but isn't it true that in our society, money kind of gives you life? It kind of, it, 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 like, if you think about it as a child, can I have that? No, because money said so. Does that make sense? It's like there's this thing. It's that important. If you think about a two-year-old or a four-year-old, I'd really like to go, here. Oh, we can't have that or we can have that or I just got an amazing bonus. Look what we can now have. So it really sits there in our brains in this really interesting place. Therefore, if, you, if you've had some trauma associated with it, it can become very difficult to hold on. The next one is, uh, so the first one was, you know, self-worth or deserving. The next one was money trauma. Uh, the third one is limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs. How many of you think that you might have some limiting beliefs around money? I've got, a, I've got enough I used to have, you know, hard work equals money. Money doesn't grow on trees and unless you start a farm, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, hard work equals money, sacrifice to make money, you know, don't waste money. Um, you know, you have to rip people off to have money, like all sorts of all sorts of beliefs. And look, if if you have a, a structure where um, having more than other people, this is a really really interesting belief, is that many of us have a, you know a guilt if we have more than other people, then it's our job to go save them, and it's a really crappy way to live. You know, I used to do this a lot. If I made if I made money, I'd give it away. And, and the reason why I give it away is I had an idea that, that my job was to save people. And the truth is, is every time I gave it away, you know, it never turned out the way I wanted. In fact, uh, it's much better to let the person get an education and create it themselves. You see, if I was saving them, what was I really doing? I was saying, you're not powerful enough to make it yourself. You see, you know, I'll give you a hand up, I'll give you a loan. Um, but if I just give it to you, I'm saying you're not powerful. And that's, it's a very interesting thing. Uh, so lots of limiting beliefs around, around money. Uh, the, the next one, the fourth one is negative emotion uh, about money. Uh, many of us might be uh, you know, afraid of it, angry at it, frustrated with it, uh, impulsive with it. Some of us are very impulsive. I don't know, you know, you get it, the next day you got to spend it. Some people are already spending it before they've even got it and others, are terrified of losing it, terrified of, of spending it. So um, negative emotions. The, the fifth one is bad relationship with money, where people are, you know, th their relationship with money is, you know, it's dirty or that, uh, that it's, uh, it's not good or it's not their friend or it's not their ally. Something that I love to think about with, with money is it's, it's my ally in, uh, in creating a life I love. It's a it's an ally. It's a really beautiful um, system. It's the best one that humans have come up with uh, on, on how to measure things. So many of us don't have that relationship. Uh, the next one is value conflicts around money. Is I want money, but I want to be spiritual. 
and uh, spiritual people aren't interested in money. And I just think this is so ridiculous. Like the idea that, you know, you can't be spiritual and make money. It's like money has nothing to do with ripping people off. Money literally is a measurement of value. It's a beautiful thing. It values something and you can use it and you can share it. I think anyone who, who doesn't understand that isn't actually spiritual. They're not actually here enjoying a human experience of going, hey, it's a really, really, really good system to, to value something, you know? Uh, so some of us have value conflicts uh, around that, which I think is, uh, is, is not, not, not good. Uh, and the last one is, is, a, is a big fear of success is that uh, if I was successful, then I'd be rejected. And, uh, and that's interesting. So let me cover the seven again. Uh, hey, you guys enjoying today so far? I know I haven't got to the recode yet, but uh, I wanted to, to get this through. Just give me some feedback in the chat if you are, uh, because I think it's, a, it's important, important work. So the seven were, the seven ways we have resistance is one, self-worth and deserving. Two, money trauma. Three, limiting beliefs. Four, negative emotions. Five, bad relationships. Six, value conflicts. And seven, fear of success. Fear of success. And the truth is, is that um, money is absolutely trivial. And it just allows you to, to, to have more units uh, of measurement. But it's a very, it's a very nice, it's nice to have lots of it. Um, did someone get the list of the seven? Do you want me to copy them into the chat box? I'll copy them in. I'll copy them in. Oh, it's too big to paste. <laughs> There's too much here. Sorry, it won't paste. Oh, there we go. Someone did. Thank you, thank you. Was that a team member that posted it? Uh, anyway, uh, thanks a lot. Thanks for posting it. Yeah, it came out a little bit weird. Anyway, uh, good stuff. Good stuff. Maybe Mel, you could take the title of each one and post it for the team. Okay, so so uh, we've got a little bit more to cover before we do recode. So my question is is what do you what do you actually want from money? You know, like what, what what's what's actually important to you? To me, there's uh, there's there's two different types of. Uh, you know, of money. First, there's active money, and then there's passive money. Active money is money that I actively need to engage with, that I need to to work in a system to to have uh, or own. And then there's passive money, which uh, takes very, 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 very um, small amounts of my time. And my goal, and my goal for you all, if you choose, is to be able to not need to use any active time uh, to, to have the money that you need. Does that make sense? Because once you, once you realize that you can have it all now, and then you can, you can go out there and, and create and, and have some fun. So there's two different types. So my, my goal for you is to choose to create systems that allow you first to have more than enough um, active income, more than enough, an overflowing cup of active income to flow that into passive income so that it, that it works without you. So then you, you truly have freedom. And uh, my choice for all of you would be to create systems that add value to the planet without you uh, needing to be actively engaged in them. Does that, sound, does that sound right? Because if you could have systems in place that uh, allow you to uh, do this, then, then you know, you're able to have more than enough. So, and, the, and there's a lot of ways, a lot of ways to add value in the world uh, that, that, that don't necessarily need to take your time. Does that make sense? Like they don't necessarily take your time. So if you're someone out there going, I need more ways to, to create money, what I want you to change that to is I need to find more ways that I can add value to other people. 
And I want you to understand that value is increasing satisfaction in their life or decreasing the pain in their life. And then once you find ways to add value, you then want to find ways to do it without so much of your time. So do it in a group setting like this. Uh, right now, there's 325 of you on the call. So to be able to do it in a group setting where there's one unit of your time serving 325, which I'm so blessed. And by the way, thank you so much for showing up to my call. It means the world to me, by the way. And I hope you guys get a shitload of value out of this. I truly hope that Magnetic Mind increases the satisfaction in your life and decreases the pain. You know, like that is that is the one goal. And I hope that it's worth at least... 10 times uh, whatever it is that you've invested in. And that is such a, a true choice for me. And, and I want you to look at that and find that obviously, if you want to get certified in Magnetic Mind or other things, we've got a system for you to do this, but there's so many ways to add value in the world in ways that, you know, people want to pay for it. Okay. Uh, so it's very, 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 very important. So, Let's get into the recode. I would like you to choose. And the image that I chose when I was learning to really get into the end result is as I chose this image to meditate on, okay? And the image was this image of this overflowing lake that was fed with all of these streams and rivers that were overflowing the lake. And then the, the streams would come in, the lake was so full and it was overflowing and it was creating all this life around it. And it was overflowing and I could see others who were getting the overflow and things that was going. And that was the thing, and you ready for it? That is what fed and watered my land of plenty. And it was this overflowing lake of everything there to grow, everything that I chose to have and, and be and celebrate with. And it was so good. And I want you to get into an image and we're going to do a choice. And then we're going to recode anything and everything that's in the way of you experiencing yourself as someone that has way more than enough. You know, you have so much and you're adding so much value to the world and people are thankful and they're, they're happier because of you and, and, and the world gets bigger and more people get to do more things because of your choice. And that's the image. And I kind of want to imprint that image on this session. And, and we're going we're gonna to close our eyes and tune into what it would be like to be you, to be the guardian of such a system of all of these different streams feeding one thing that's overflowing. And I want you to think beautiful gardens, pristine water, animals being able to drink from overflow, people and villages. And just imagine that because you create this stream, because you create this abundance, everyone has more. And then when you do that, we're going to tune into it. We're going to ask, well, what are all the ways? What are all the ways that you could create value, increasing satisfaction or decreasing pain to other people? And we're going to say, what are the things that you could do? And then when you think some of those up, you want to ask yourself, out of all of them, which ones could I do and create a system so it works with the smallest amount of my time? Because that's the key. The key is add as much value to as many people as possible, the smallest amount of time. It's literally the secret. You look at any people out there. Well, actually, it's not the secret. It's the obvious. <laughs> the secret tries to have you psychically trick the universe into just throwing something at you. This is the obvious structure of everyone you see who's got loads of wealth, from J.K. Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter, to Steve Jobs, who made iPhones, and to, the, to Bezos with, uh, with Amazon, Oprah and her network, whatever they do, they found a way to create massive value to loads of people with a small amount of their time. Do you guys agree? Like that's, that's what you must find out. And you're not broken, so you can figure it out, whether it's learning to create you know, a lawn mowing business like Jim's Mowing did and turned it into a $500 million company or to cook uh, amazing food, uh, put it into a, a franchise and have other people, whatever it is, you can do it.
Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.